Wisdom shines in talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. My comments bring this profound wisdom into your experience. Use YouTube's closed captions to read along. Ramana tells us instead of looking in the world for fleeting happiness to inquire, to practice Hatma Vaichara. This is usually translated as self-inquiry, but it's better called self-investigation. But what is this and how do I do it? Ramana says to ask, who am I? And just stay with the question. What does that mean? How we see the world depends on how we see ourselves. So this quest is deep and vital. The question is amazingly broad. I exist and I know that I exist. But what actually exists? Is it this body? Is it this mind? Is it this idea of ourselves, this I thought? There is something existing, something conscious always. What is this? What do I consider myself to be? What identities, what roles do you identify with? What knows them all? Who is that? What is this consciousness, this being? There is something that always is, always knowing. Is this it? What is its relation to me? Within these questions are even more questions like, is there a separate world? Are there others? Or is it only this one self? Is there birth? Is there death? All these questions and more. The mind creates all these ideas. What you think makes up reality. What is actually real? Does the mind create reality? Who knows the mind anyway? How do I know what is real and what is not? We are told to discriminate to separate the real from the unreal, the temporary from what is always, then dismiss the temporary, the unreal, and stand as what remains. Investigating all of this, take the attitude, don't know, and be curious, something is always there. Things of the world come and go. What does not? This is inquiry. It's not something you do for some time each day. It is an approach to life. Everywhere in my experience, I am. Notice what is always there and stand as that. Be that. You are anyway, so be what you are and know. And with all of it, the answer is not in the answer. That is, it's not a matter of thinking about it. It's a matter of feeling, of intuition, much more than a matter of mental understanding. What you understand cognitively does not open the door to this deep knowing. 
rather it is what you know as immediate experience right now it is in the same way as you know that you exist and knowing like this is also being you know it and you are it what else could you ever be than what you are already this is the deep meaning of non-duality there is no other no one else that you could ever possibly be you are that now at the end of this inquiry you know that you're not any of the changing but persistent ideas not any idea based on external identity who you are is more internal more subjective but where subject and object are no longer any different knowing is being you are one without a second without any alternative there is no other nothing else thou art that and that is all there is this knowledge comes from self-inquiry if, if it is not yours yet keep inquiring keep investigating yourself then the maharshi deals with a subject he rarely talked about what if you are not ready for self-inquiry he responds laying out the four margas the four yogas that make up the hindu system of spiritual practice at other times he has said since you will have to inquire eventually you might as well do it now this is jhana marga this time he talks about the other three paths and what to do if you're not ready for inquiry the four yogas are karma bhakti raja and jhana they are focused progressively deeper more internal the first is body based on actions on selfless service then emotions with love and surrender to a higher power then mental discipline with raja yoga and buddhist practices and meditation then direct self-knowledge as taught by ramana and his predecessors these are the four hindu paths to liberation ramana focuses on atma vichara self-inquiry his whole teaching is in the yana marga context this was his own direct experience but here maharshi talks about the other paths he says if you're not ready for jhana marga try then in order bhakti raja or karma yoga he starts with bhakti he always said that bhakti was a valid way to liberation if you can completely relinquish the sense of mind to a higher power this gets rid of the eye just like with inquiry with bhakti you surrender the eye to a higher power with inquiry you discover the eye was never real to start with it never actually existed 
if bhakti does not suit you, then try one of the various forms of mental discipline. In Hindu, these are elements of Raja Yoga, which is the root of yoga in the U.S. Raja Yoga is also the root of Buddhism, where its practices are very highly developed. These practices calm your mind and help you learn self-control and discipline. The discipline increases your ability to stay focused in meditation. The calmness helps quiet the mind. Deepest meditation starts with this quiet mind. If you can't do this, then try selfless service, karma yoga. This settles your mind as you start to pay attention to something besides your own immediate desires. Your mind cannot do two things at once. So when you pay attention to one area, attention to the other subsides. When you pay more attention to the needs of others, you pay less attention to what you thought were your own needs. This is the beginning of developing dispassion. This dispassion is really where spirituality starts with looking past what you thought of as yourself. It matters little how you go about doing this, this looking past yourself into yourself. But this is the key that unlocks your own truth. And the instant you see yourself differently, the whole world changes too. You see it in a different way too. These videos help bring Ramana Maharshi's teachings into your direct experience. Subscribe now to help you deepen your understanding and practice to know the self. Just click the subscribe button.